Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Uh, we are launching some more components for the space station that's under construction. This is kind of a another trust thing for the station, a hub. Um, we're still recovering files and whatnot. I actually had a lot of stuff recorded, and uh, it's been a very slow process recovering these from the hard drive with the bad sectors and um, getting this to a state where I can edit something together that makes some sense. So. Uh, this is pretty much my heavy launcher that I've been using. I really do like those liquid fuel boosters on the outside there. I found them to be quite useful. Um, you can see there's a, a cupola module on the uh, on part of this module that we're launching up there. So this is going to be the first component of the station that can actually support a, a real crew. Uh, the general idea here is that uh, we're going to put this along the central backbone of the station and it branches off in two different directions so uh, we're up here rendezvousing with the station now the things flipping out a little bit for whatever reason this version of mech jab was being a little bit uh, I don't overly aggressive at times and weird trying to dock and of course it's the dark side because it's always it seems to be the dark side when I do stuff but at least we have some lights on the station now and uh, so this is what I was talking about with the central core. We have those uh, habitat modules. I guess there already were some habitat modules on the station. I forgot that we put those up there last time, those uh, crew tanks. But um, this is basically going to give me a place to attach some docking ports for crew transfers and also to attach fuel, that sort of stuff. Um, so it's, it's really there for utility stuff uh, to make things a lot easier. We're also, while we're up here, I'm really not happy with how crooked that solar panel is on the left side there. And there's no docking port on it to really realign it, so we're going to actually eject it from the station. You can see how bad that is there. Um, we're going to actually eject it from the station, and we'll bring up a replacement uh, at a later date. There's only one docking port on it, and that's that uh, docking port that it's actually connected to the station with. So what I'm going to do is actually just undock it and let it drift away on its own you know volition there and hopefully we'll get enough space cleared out here for uh, this other ship that we brought the new component up with uh, to slide in there dock with it and then bring it back to Kerbin that's the the general idea there and again we don't have any fuel tanks to top off or anything so we can just pretty much go and this one didn't really want to back off on its own so I had to hit the RCS and I'm just sliding over to the side here and basically it's gonna take a minute for that to drift far enough away so there's enough of a gap here now that we're just sliding sideways in here and uh, this looks like it's gonna work out just perfectly which is cool um, it's kinda wasteful I suppose to do this I, but I didn't really have another good option and at this point I'm actually doing the docking manually because I didn't want Mech Jeb freaking out and colliding with the space station, which I thought was a very real, real possibility. In fact, I would almost say it was a certainty that that would end up happening because it takes like some pretty crazy room for Mech Jeb to be able to dock. So I did this docking manually just to get it done. And uh, a little bit of a hiccup there. System loaded something. I don't know what. And... Closing in. Probably paying too much attention to the docking port alignment tool down there and not enough, like, actually looking at the models as I uh, do this, but looks like we're pretty close here. Magnet. Come on. How close do you need me to be? Well. I ended up editing that, that down, I guess, because it took a little bit, but um, we ended up getting it docked eventually, and we'll pull away from the station here. Head on back down to Kerbin with this, and properly and safely dispose of it, I'm sure. Because that's what we do. And, um, so we'll have to launch another uh, solar module up. The station can operate perfectly fine right now, just having the one arm functional. Uh, it really doesn't need the two, especially because eventually I'm going to bring some reactors up here. Uh, one of the ideas of the station is that it's going to be kind of an experimental platform where I can figure out how all the interstellar stuff works um, as far as reactors go, how much power they can actually generate, that sort of stuff, because 
I really don't know much about it, and I want to have a, a kind of a test platform. So it's one of the things that the station is going to do. I just saw the station shadow pass over. That was kind of scary. Anyway, back down to Kerbin we go. And we're launching with the same launch vehicle here. Another component of the station. This has some um, additional radiators on it. It's basically an adapter for my, for my fuel tanks to go onto. Um, I'm probably going to... I, I, oh, that was another reason I actually just remembered as I'm talking here. I had to remove that other solar panel is that I realized afterwards that without a docking port I can't actually remove it and, re -put, and put it back on and it was in the way of where I want my fuel tank to go. Um, that will become a little bit clearer as we dock this here. So you can see uh, how I have my, my panels arranged. I actually need to undock this and redock it one more time but uh, the general idea is that that um, docking hub is going to have one of the uh, spherical fuel tanks attached to it and I'm going to have to come in from the front part of the station to actually dock that because there's no way I'm going to be able to slide in between that dock, the solar panel arm and this so it was actually in the way that's one of the reasons I returned it there down to Kerbin too because I didn't really think the construction process through nearly as well as I guess I should have and you know that that happens I guess and so we got that docked. Um, I don't like the way that the new uh, radiators are aligned here. So I'm actually going to undock and dock onto one of the other ports and flip this whole thing around just so it's lined up uh, more to my liking. But see, this is where I realized that I didn't like how it was aligned because it's going to be sticking out over the docking port area and that's going to kind of bug me. Uh, it probably won't matter ever, but might as well have it arranged the way that I actually had intended to do it. So that means we have to uh, detach and reattach and slide stuff around and whatnot, but uh, it's not too big of a deal coming in sideways here. Actually, I guess I didn't undock. I just uh, I undocked it from the station and came in sideways, I guess is how I handled it. So it's connected the right way now. And uh, so the fuel tank's going to go basically opposite of where my uh, utility craft is that brought this up just now. So that's the the idea there. Uh, I like to have a fuel tank on every one of my stations pretty much so that I can uh, keep everything fueled up as we go. And speaking of the devil, here is our fuel tank. And this thing wobbles horrifically right at the beginning. But the computer systems get it back under control. And we have a pretty uneventful uh, launch after that. I totally thought we were just going to do a nice little gentle flip <laughs> right into the ground there, but didn't end up happening. So again, we're closing in on the station and uh, getting everything aligned. I think we're coming in I'm trying to squint. I have this on a 21-inch monitor right now. I'm trying to squint to see. Uh, yeah, I think we're all right with our approach. There we are indeed all right with the approach. So, um, this is what I was referring to. You can see the solar panel arm on the left hand side there. Uh, there was one on the right here until I removed it, and clearly that would have been completely in the way of getting this docking procedure done. So, you know, a little oversight on my part, but no harm, no foul. There's no budget yet, so you know, whatever. Just folding up some of these solar panels so that we don't have any unintended collisions here. I mean, a docking is sort of a collision, but it's a slow, purposeful collision. So, uh, I rather like these, I pretty much use these sphere, spherical fuel tanks almost exclusively. There are a few cases I don't use them on my space stations, but those are kind of few and far between. Alright, so, that is all locked in and good to go on this side, so that pretty much completes you know another good section of our construction here I uh, don't know how much transferring I can really do a fuel but we do want to I don't think I actually have any fuel in that tank yet so right now what I'm doing is I'm just topping everything off on the station because I might as well you know it's just gonna get wasted and poison Kerbin's atmosphere I guess if we uh, return this down to the surface it's kind of annoying how slow the transfers are when you're transferring to something with a really small fuel tank, I guess it takes the same amount of time to transfer a full fuel tank, regardless of how big the receiving tank is. It seems like it just takes the same amount of time. If that was, instead of 10 monopropellant that that tank could hold, if it was like 100, I think it would have taken just about the same amount of time. So look at this. Look how quick this is 
this fuel is transferring. It's ridiculous. So uh, we're just going to take this thing down using mono propellant. That should be good enough. I, I don't think it has any liquid fuel left on it, but it doesn't really need it because we have tons and tons of mono propellant and we only have to just hit the atmosphere. So uh, I guess that's going to pretty much do it for this episode. It's another short one here, but like I said, it's been time consuming recovering the information and I'm trying to get through to where the the footage is all just intact again so I don't have to edit around stuff so much so uh, I appreciate your patience while we're getting through this we'll get caught up I actually have done asteroid redirect stuff now and stuff so we'll get caught up with all that pretty soon so I will catch you guys in the next uh, next time and I want to thank you for watching